Hey, Vid had a five here. Can we talk for a minute? All right. North Carolina. It is a was um, considered a swing state in 2012. I don't know exactly what makes anything a swing state. Maybe uh, picking up population. Maybe it going from red to blue. Uh, what we call purplish states. Purplish states are like, um, let me see, Virginia or like Pennsylvania, Ohio. Um, well, Pennsylvania is is, is is more solid blue. But Colorado, Nevada, um, Florida, those are purplish states. They can go blue or they can go red. But one purplish state that is definitely purplish in its sentiments is North Carolina. And we need to be we need to be concerned regarding North Carolina because it is the latest battlefront in not only voter rights, but for the direction of this country as it pertains to the state government. See, many people may think that there are there is not a difference between Democrats and Republicans. Well, you know what? On the federal level, they may seem a little closer together. However, on the state level, when you compare Colorado and North Carolina, you will definitely see that there is a marked difference. Colorado has recently um, has recently passed gun control, which for which two senators were recalled. In North Carolina, they recently passed a bill that the guns that are collected from seizures from police cannot be destroyed. They've also expanded. Um, um, in North Carolina, we see that the Viva Act, which not only eliminates public financing for judges. It also allows anyone to challenge anyone else in the state. Um, there was a Markelvius King, I believe, who was challenged regarding his residency because they did not want him to vote, one, at the college, and if he could not establish residency, he could not run for city council. Mar Markelvius King, or Markelvius, or Mar Markelvius King, has now been able to run for office. The reason why is because he lives in a predominantly black college that was challenged by someone who, um, I forget his name, but he was featured in Rachel Maddow. And guess what? Art Pope, the man who single-handedly bought McCrory the election, had an aide there um, with my, with um, the, the white man who was challenging King's um, residency. Why was she there? I'm pretty sure that she didn't have to, you know, she was there taking notes. I'm pretty sure she knows how the objections are done and handled. And with re Republicans controlling all 100 counties of North Carolina, I am sure that she probably had nothing to worry about. My thought is this. She had to see if the law was working in, it, in its intended manner. That is the only thing I can really think about. The other, the main reasons that we, we should also be concerned with North Carolina is because of the voter suppression law there called the Viva Act. Many voter IDs, many voter ID states, especially the strict ones, have limited classes of ID that they can use. And UNC, University of North Carolina schools, may not be able to use their photo IDs for identification. That is another thing to where now they are also trying to take polls from on campus, off campus, to where it is majorly difficult for them to get to. Last time I checked, Colorado, on the other hand, they were making their, um, their elections all by mail. And personally, I know that there are, are many safeguards that we use in our election system to make sure that the person is who they say they are, and they do not have to present ID. So now, there's another thing that that, um, that the Viva Law does. It also raises contributions with, to, uh, with inflation or something like that. It raises them every year. There are no, basically, it could be this one year, $1,000 more than next and $1,000 more than next. And the fact that there are other provisions in there that quite make me sick over North Carolina is the fact that that North Carolina used to be a very progressive state. In fact, North Carolina used to be one of the worst states for voter participation. After putting in early voting, which this law also cuts, 
early voting brought North Carolina up to at least like maybe 20 and then up to at least maybe the top up even even higher on in in the voters participation and now this viva law comes to undo that if you think that we don't need to keep an eye on North Carolina understand North Carolina is a battleground right now it is not only a battleground for voter rights, it is also a battleground for the direction of this country. Florida and Arizona are pretty much whole, wholly owned subsidiaries of ALK. There is no doubt about that in my mind right now. North Carolina is the next state where we will determine if the people win or not. We have to keep an eye not only on North Carolina, but Wisconsin as well. There are so many states around this country that are dealing with so many things, especially with Michigan and Detroit and Illinois and Chicago. But we got to keep up the fight here. North Carolina, I I just really, I don't, don't know maybe if I can articulate as much as I want to. But, but I really feel for North Carolina right now because they are going through so much. But if anything, just like Texas women, don't mess with North Carolina, folks, because um, gerrymandered redistrict ger gerrymandered redistricting can only get you so far. Because of course, in ten years, you'll they'll they'll have to draw up the whole thing, and by that time, we can have Democrats back in there again, and they can get mess up those districts again and put a Democratic control in there. But the other part about it is, while Republican states are dithering, we see blue states going making a lot of progress maybe not as fast as we would like but at least they're making making moves forward next time you think republicans and democrats are the same take a look at california and colorado take a look at florida and texas and north carolina and then tell me that on the state level at least that both democrats and republicans are the same Viva North Carolina, muerte to the viva law. Good day, YouTube, but thanks for letting me talk to you.